Okay, guys. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. We can okay, hear you. great. Okay, welcome to the CS458. If you are the wrong class, this means definitely you have to move to somewhere else. First, let me introduce myself. My name is Yusuf. This is the fifth year at the IIT. Uh, don't worry, this is not, not the first time teaching this class. This is my email. If you like to send me any email, shoot me an email about any questions, any concerns about the class, I would be happy to reply to your answer or reply to your email. My research interests to lie in the data privacy and security. That's why I'm teaching database classes and the uh, information security or cyber security courses in the IIT. This is my office hour. Uh, it's going to be Wednesdays, starting next week, not this week. So at the time, uh, actually feel free to stop by Mondays, Wednesdays, if I have time, after 5 o'clock. Actually, yeah, after 5 o'clock, I will be available up to 7. Because they have to wait in order to try to avoid the traffic, you need to drive back home. I mean, after two weeks. So usually we're going to use the Blackboard, where we're going to find the assignment, reading materials, if they exist, uh, lecture notes and announcements about the due dates and the exams, etc. And we're going to rely on the PS in order to perform the class discussions. So if you have any questions, any concerns, for example, due to the lab assignment, if you have a question, you have obstacles, you cannot get over it, you can just post your questions and hopefully the student is going to try to help you beside me and the TA. Okay, so I encourage you to use the Piazza in order to achieve this goal. Okay, so what's the goal of this course? Just this course will give you the basic understanding of the problems of information security in general, okay? What's the problems? What's the solution that we can perform in order to achieve the secure information in the computer and networks in general? So, of course, we'll start first with identify what do you mean by the information security in general? What's the goal? What's the problem? Then starting looking at the different problems and how can we figure out the solution to these problems, okay? Uh, hopefully, you're going to be at the end of this course, you're going to be able to use this ability based on your understanding of the information security in general in order to design a better design or secure design. Okay? For example, if you learn about the way how can you store the password, you're going to see that after this class, you would never store your pass passwords in plain text. If you have, you're going to build a web application or whatever and you're required to use it to authenticate the user, you can understand what you mean by the authentication, which you require to use it to provide, for example, username and password with the simple form of authentication in order to allow the user to access to your system or web application. So you need to find a way, how can you store this information, the username and the password? Definitely you're not gonna store the password in the plain text because if they're gonna be vulnerable to a different types of the attack. So in this case, we're gonna prefer, we're gonna see that you, maybe you're gonna store your data or the, you say the password, the hash. For, okay, so anyways, whatever you're going to learn in the class, help. hopefully you're going to help you in order to find out or design a better system, okay, in general. So things that we are going to cover in this class. I want to introduce you, it's going to be introduction to the major topics in the computer security in general. We're going to start defining what you mean the computer security and how this is going to be related to information security in a few minutes, okay. Uh, first, we need to go over the human factor, the security policy in general. And just speaking, we have all saying in the computer security in general, you are only as secure as your weak link. And the weak link in any security system is the human. Okay, I will move this one around. Usually, you cover this one at the beginning, but this, a few years ago, when we start teaching this course, Many times I said, okay, decide to put this one at the end. If you have a time, I can cover this one. Otherwise, I'm going to mention this one. Mainly, you're going to say, we have a problem with the human because the human don't listen, don't follow the security policy. That's why the, the weak link is going to be the user. Okay? Then, oh, actually, that's the one that we're going to start focusing in the next lecture. We're going to start looking at the applied cryptography in general. We're going to see how can you perform this symmetric and asymmetric encryption scheme. In other words, the public key encryption scheme and this a symmetric encryption scheme. Then we're going to take a look how can we, since the public key and encryption, say, generally speaking, the cryptography required to 
to have a keys. So we need to find a way or take a look at the ways how can we manage these keys. Okay, how can we exchange these keys? For example, two parts you wanted to communicate a listen part. The first we assume that we have share some kind of knowledge or secret key. How can we exchange this piece of information before to conduct, I mean, or continue doing the uh, cryptography or let's say uh, the secure protocol? We're going to take a look how can we do the authentication in general. We'll uh, give you an example a few minutes ago when you said maybe you're going to build your application required from the user, or even when you try to log in your computer right now, we we'll log into this. Uh, Lecture. You have to log in to use my IT portal, right? You have to provide user for username and password. You need to authenticate your system. You need to prove your identity to the system in order to allow you to access this, right? And then we're gonna see that we're gonna talk about the access control. What does that mean in this case? Once you get access to the system to the computer, what we can do and what we cannot do. For example, if you log in the one of the computer, the, uh, the computer science labs in the first floor, you see that once you authenticate yourself, you see that you cannot, there's some tasks that you cannot do. For example, if you try to delete the entire or the change the operating system that's installed in these machines, you cannot do this one because you didn't have access or active before this one. That we're gonna cover later. We're gonna take a look to the network security, database security, and operating system security. You uh, deny yourself attack, malware, or let's say malicious software. There is many security problems to consider, uh, but we don't have enough time. So mainly I'm going to focus on the database security. If we get time, I'm going to go jump to the network security and operating system security. If not, that means maybe give you like a few slides just to, for, in order to help you to, in order to study this one by in your own time. But again, we have a lot of security problems to consider, but we don't have enough time to cover all of them. By the way, you, it's fine. you can't understand me, right? Because sometimes we get excited and speak faster. So please, you can uh, interrupt me at any time, either yell at me or raise your hand, just to say, please slow down if you feel that I'm speaking fast. So far, so good. Okay. Great. So, <clears throat> so what's this course is not, and I'm not, okay? Mainly we're gonna do what? We're gonna have like, it's gonna be like a combination. We're gonna have a lecture, we're gonna have a few parts. Then after that, we're gonna support these lectures with labs, okay? But the lab number of labs, you're gonna see that we have mi minimum five, four labs. We, can, uh, we try to add more, we're gonna see within the class when you explain something, I'm gonna try to give you like a short tutorial. How can you perform that? For example, we need to do like uh, compute the hash function. We need to create a password, then you compute the hash function. We're gonna give you like a short tutorial. There is another course if you're interested to learn more hands-on ex uh, experience in the cybersecurity. We do have another course. It does mean that I advertise this course. It's my course, a new course of ethical hacking and the penetration testing. We start teach this one in the fall 20, I think, 2020, yeah. Then after that, I think 2021, I guess, yeah. Then after that, this semester, we'll try to plan to keep offering this course every spring. This interesting course, maybe we're gonna give you like, give you like a wide range of the topics that relate to the ethical hacking, the penetration testing, and generally speaking, you're gonna have a lot of labs to, to perform. If you want to learn about more details about the system and the network security, especially for the network security, operating system security, etc., we do have another class with a CSP, which one interesting class. I believe I encourage you at least to take a look at the content of this class to see what it makes sense to you if you're interested to learn more. In this class, you see that in CS458, we're going to adopt the Seeds Lab. In the Seeds Lab, there's many labs. In this class, we are going to cover only at least three of them. In the CSP544, they're going to cover at least 11 to 12 labs from that Seeds Lab. So we're going to have a lot of many, let's say, uh, interesting uh, hands-on security on the operating system and the network security. Okay? There's another security course, if you're aware. That already offered in the IIT here, in the computer science, we do have a software security, is a new course about how can you help you to build secure software. 
Uh, we have another uh, other course, data privacy and security, uh, cryptography and advanced computer security, mainly if you're interested to do your PhD or they say a uh, graduate study in the computer science, those are the course, and you need to specialize in the data privacy and security or the cyber security. Those courses are gonna, gonna be a uh, good fit for you. We do have a new master of cyber security degree if you're aware about, especially for the undergrad student, they can use this one as a core terminal, a specialization in this one, get a master degree in this part if you're interested, you can take a look at uh, these course. So I mean, we do have many options, hopefully you can take a look at them and try to choose the best one fit in your uh, goal. The lectures of this class is going to be in the PDF format, it's going to be available post before the class. Hopefully, uh, I know I changed this one recently, so I'm trying to, uh, usually every semester when you teach the same course, I'm trying to modify something, add something, change something, uh, add some material, remove some material. So I'm keeping updating my slides. Hopefully the slides can be available before the class, so you're going to have enough time at least to take a look through the slides to see what the expectation for the next lecture, whether this, what the topics that we need to cover, and etc. The lecture is going to be recorded and uploaded to the course Blackboard right after each class. I'm trying to figure out the best way to do that uh, because we do have online section with the section two. In this case, we have to record the class. For the first two weeks, I'm responsible to record my class. After two weeks, after to get back to the, I mean, to the uh, in-person class. Recording gonna be out of my control, so I'm not gonna the person gonna be responsible for the recording. So if you have an issue with the quality and etc., you have to contact. I I, I don't really recall what's the department responsible for the audio, video, or something. I don't remember recall the exact name, but we have a special specific department that take care of this one. Anyway, if you have a problem with the board, I mean the sound and etc., you can just send me an email. I will direct you to the right entity you need to contact. Okay, I'm planning to do something, I did this one last semester, so I'm planning to have a live session during the class, even in the person. So I'm going to create a session, I can this one a live session. Some student, maybe even the online student, maybe interested to attend the class and the live session, so I will give you this opportunity, this chance, at least we have a different way to how to uh, conduct this class. Okay? Uh, the course syllabus, ho hopefully you get a chance to take a look at this one. If not, I encourage you to take a look at the course service to see what's going on in this course, what they offer, what the outcome. Then after that, you can, can't compare this one with your ultimate goal, whether this course is going to help you to understand what's going on or help you in order to build your CV or not. I usually encourage this unit to take the course that's going to help them in the future. For example, you know that in within one or two, three semesters, you're going to graduate. So you know exactly whether which job or which field you're going to do. Uh, I mean, to work for, yeah? For example, software engineering, that's what you need to focus or collect all the costs related to the software engineering in order to help you to build your career in the future. If you wanted to be cybersecurity, this one interesting course, at least, we have maybe you need to take another courses. And these courses are going to help you also. I encourage you to apply for the internship. It's going to help you in order to decide you have a better understanding first whether this field that makes sense to you or not and maybe change your mind, okay? So anyway, uh, please take a look to the syllabus and make sure that uh, to read to make sure it makes sense to you or not. What's about the workload and the grading, okay? We do have a one midterm and one final exam, okay? So both of them are going to be closed book, closed notes, exams. You are allowed to have one sheet of paper. You can write whatever you want. If you know me, I hate memorization. I cannot memorize the stuff. If you ask me about the definition today, I'll give you one definition. Tomorrow, I'll give you different definitions. It's going to be the same meaning, but I mean, I'm not going to, I cannot memorize words. So that's why I'm not expecting from this student to memorize the stuff. I'm a big fan for the learning by doing. And that's why you try to, in all my class, to have like some labs in courses here to apply whatever the knowledge that you cover in the class by hand in order to not, not easy to forget that. At the same time with the exam, there'll be mainly, there'll be true or false questions. Choose the right answer. Okay. The midterm exam will be in this state. Hopefully there's no one else already, I mean, uh, reserved this place for the midterm. 
Okay, and the final exam is going to be somehow, I mean, I cannot tell exact date, but it's going to be in, I think, the first week of the May. It's out of my control, I'm not the person who's going to be assigned the final exam. For the assignment, we do have at least four hands on security exercise. We're going to see how can you perform this one, okay? What kinds of assignments? Mainly, we're going to adapt the assignment from the seed slab. Okay, if you click over this link, I mean, the seed slab, you, you trust me, right? If you give me a link, you can click over this one. So don't worry, you can click over this one, the seed slab, this link. You're going to go to that lab to get more details, more other or other labs if you want to learn by your own time. These labs must be doing individually. So that means there's no group working. You have to do this one by yourself. It's funny. I mean, it's interesting. At least something help you to understand whatever we cover in the class. We try to have a lab so at least we can mix the actual work or, I mean, uh, better understanding of the subject. You see that, I mean, for the assignment, which is going to be only security exercise, it's worth 40%. The midterm exam, 25%, and the final exam, 35%. It's easy to get A in my class, okay? I think, as I mentioned, it doesn't hurt me if everyone gets A. At the same time, it doesn't hurt me if everyone... It hurts, actually, if no one gets A, of course. So, I'm doing... Uh, curving the grades at the end, add extra points, few points to every all the students. Okay, so, as I mentioned, it's easy to get A, but the most important thing, you need to be honest and you have to do the uh, labs, okay? So, what kind of labs? We get hands on. We're gonna cover first. We need to work with the labs first. We need to set up our let's say virtual inside. I mean machine. We are gonna rely on the virtual box in order to in, install let's say uh, Ubuntu uh, image, which allow us in order to perform all these labs. As alternative, I'm gonna try to. I think you need to apply for the credit for the Google Cloud, as you usually do this one every single semester. Uh, this credit is going to uh, allow the student, give the student, I guess, $50, which is going to be more than enough in order to try to conduct these labs under the cloud. So you're going to have two options. I encourage you to have to do this one in your own machine. If you, for one reason or some reason, you cannot do this one, you can test this one in the cloud, or you can do this one in parallel. So it's going to be like excellent, uh, good experience for you to work with the virtual machines and also work with the cloud in order to conduct these labs. So the first one is going to be the lab environment, just to set up, try to download all the software that are required in order to do all these labs. Then after that, the lab two. There's, I'm going to talk about the uh, secret encryption scheme with the private key encryption scheme. Okay. So the third one is going to be about the collision attack. So we're going to talk about the hash function, or the secure hash function. What do you mean by this one? So we're going to cover everything. We'll give you an example here with the MD5 or what type of the hash function. We're going to take a look at the database uh, security or security of the database. And the, we're going to uh, actually get the web development. Uh, uh, you gotta take a look to how can we perform I mean, the SQL injection attack, which another interesting lab is easy one to perform. And again, I'm gonna say we're gonna add more uh, short tutorials during the class in order to cover the rest of the material. As you mentioned, those are the minimum number of labs. Uh, it might be the case we're gonna add more. Because the more the labs that we add, the more fun the class is gonna be. Okay? At least for me. Uh, I hate that to talk about this slide, but please make sure that you do your work. Don't copy the lab of someone else because it doesn't help, yeah? It's easy to do. The labs is not complicated. It's easy. Okay, for every single lab, you're going to have a short description what the requirements of the lab, and for every single task, I'm going to explain or ask you more details to you what I need from you to do. Okay? So please be honest and do your own work. Uh, do we have any text box we need to require? There's no required text box, okay? These are recommended if you want, okay? If you take a look, click over this link, this one link for the one text box, it will give you more resources to the students and the instructor at the same time. We have, they have different labs, different environments, different slides, etc. So we have many resources you can follow. There is no need to find out, to find, I mean, to buy any text box. Whatever you need, I'm going to provide you during this class, okay? So, what the expectation from you, of course, will work, require from you to attend in-person lectures if you can during the COVID-19 situation, so I cannot enforce you to be in the class. So, if you don't feel safe, 
That's fine. You can stay at home and you can attend the live session class. I'm gonna add the live session start in two after we back to the person. Be active. Please try to do the hands-on assignment. Don't do it on time. Don't wait. I know it's, it's easy, but sometimes it can be time consuming. Okay, so please you have to start early, and of course you have to study for the exam. You might learn something in the class that somehow help you maybe uh, uh, allow you, you know that to identify the security vulnerability problem or problems in any of uh, let's say uh, system or computer system or network. So to be clear, I have to say this one. You are not to use this or any other similar information to test the security of breaking into, compromise, or otherwise attack any system or network without the express consent of the owner. In other words, we have to comply with all the applicable laws. Okay? That's, I mean, the first part of the lecture. Do you have any question about the class organization? Everything is clear? Make sense to you? If you're watching Netflix, please watch me. Or share the link with me to everyone to watch whatever you're watching. So anyway, so the second part now is starting now. We talk about first, define what do you mean with information security. Because right now we're going to see what do you mean by the computer security, what do you mean by information security, and I'm going to go over the history of the computer security. In order to define the information security or the, from the computer security, we need to take a look how the computer security evolved in order to end up to have including the information security as one of the requirements or the definition. Okay. And then after that, we're going to take a look to, since we talk about the security in general, we're going to see it's going to be based on three requirements with the confidentiality, integrity, and authentic, uh, I mean, availability, which is going to be the CIA tried. Okay. Then we're going to define the privacy with similar to the confidentiality, what's the difference between the privacy and the confidentiality. Then after that, we're going to talk about the, uh, define the, uh, the security component. Well, in this case, we're going to talk about the asset, vulnerability, threats, attacks, and defense, etc. Okay, then after that, we take a look at what the architecture of the communication uh, security in general. Then after that, take a look at the computer security strategy or mechanism that you need to follow in order to protect our system. So again, this may be this lecture going to be like boring a little bit because I need to define a lot of stuff, but hopefully it's going to be interesting at the end. At least we can, I mean, understand what's going on. At least we're going to be, hopefully they'll be at the same page. First, if I ask you a question about the security, okay? Uh, why security, or in other words, why we worry about the security? So what do you think about the security? Why do you worry about the security? Or if you don't worry, that's fine. You can type your answer. We worry about security just because we worry about security just because of our condition that are very valuable to us. Everybody just got the condition so they can hack us. Okay. What else? So if you said define the security, what's the definition of the security? You said it could be compromised. To protect anything that is valuable to us. So it looks like you worry about the security when we have something, okay? We call this one of value, an asset. For example, I have my sensitive information or the medical, let's say, information, okay? Or my social security number, for example, with one kind of the information of the asset that has a value. And there is a risk could be harmed. In other words, there is a third source somehow that possess some kind of risk could be harmed with this information. Yeah? So, for example, as individuals, maybe you can you are storing a lot of sensitive information or data online. Yeah, it depends. Either go online or even your machine. Okay, and this data might be your pictures, it might be your medical information, it might be your financial information. Uh, if you work W two or the tax return, etc., that contains some sensitive information. If somehow this information has been stolen, or the tracker or the bad guy get access to this this information, then it might be that gonna be cause some harm to you, right? Maybe for the criminal, it's gonna get the profit or can get profit from this information. But the problem is this way, maybe it's going to be blackmail me if I have some sensitive information, I don't want anyone to see this information, 
or or you can use this one sell to someone else your credit card information for example yeah so that's easy we worry about the security again because you have something in value and there's a threat source that possess let's say some kind of risk okay so if we talk about the value what kind of value here we took out the value in the security here we need to find out what kind of asset that you need to protect for example someone for 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 you maybe it's gonna be let's say your social security number or your medical information or your security card information for someone else you have a different asset that has another value okay so we need in this case when you talk about or worry about the security we need to ask the question for example what is the value in the security first when you need to protect that you know, uh, uh, something that has value where do such threats come from for example who's gonna target my value or this asset that i have whether it's gonna be someone right now sitting with other, us in the same class in the same company or someone from the external world try to ask my data okay what kind of risk what's gonna happen for example we talk because you said there's a risk okay so we are going to define this one in more details and also who's the source of the threat at the same time okay so in terms of value as i mentioned here we are going to all store some kind of data sensitive data if the bad guys criminals whatever or hackers they say get hands on these sensitive data they can monetize it okay uh, and profit from it they can sell this information medical information has i mean they're selling medical information credit cards are going to be in the black uh, market you say black internet together you send it to someone other people can collect this information in order to get the benefit from it okay it's not only for the person here society too rely on the internet in general right so it's for the security is very, it's a very important thing for them too okay we do have let's say critical resource that we rely on for example uh, we can say uh maybe we have let's say uh as an example smart grid yeah smart grids we have like the the power the uh, infrastructure that controlled by the computer which is specified we can control uh, how the power is going to be electricity going to be distributed who can get what when produced from one uh, station gonna, how can you transfer to another station the customer consuming and etc if the bad guy i mean control this grid control then the uh, gonna i mean hurt i mean the overall society right and also the business and the government okay they have some information they have to say information which is installed in the internet or even in the, the same machine or the internet on the server right now all we move all most of the data to the cloud right so that means if there's any unauthorized access this kind of formation could be economically or let's say politically disaster in the general okay so every organization whether they be public or private in general regardless of the size of this information organization has what has information it wants to protect for the IT for example we do have student information we need to protect your student information your even academic information which kind of information that we need to protect all right and etc so we have like has information it wants to protect it could be customer information it might be product of ser or service information it might be employee or student information this is a different type of information that we need to protect so regardless of the source okay it's the organization job responsibility in order to protect this information for the IIT they have to figure out a way in order to protect all the information of the student and the instructor or the employee that work in the IIT in general okay uh, unfortunately there aren't enough security professionals to go around in this okay so as a result everyone in the organization must have a working knowledge of how to protect the information assigned to them at the same time how to assess to say in the preventing the unauthorized to say disclosure of this information damage or destruction of that information don't look at the it we are lucky in the it we have enough people to take care of this information but not every single organization especially for the small organization might be they ha don't have i mean experts to say they don't have to say uh 
security professional or enough security professional in order to take care of the protecting all the information. So they rely on their employee in order to take care of this one. So in other words, either as an employee, whether you're going to be part of the solution or you're going to be part of the problem. Part of the solution, the one that's aware about the security, for example, if the, an employee receives a malicious email, let's say phishing email, is not going to open this one. But they, so in this case, going to be part of the solution because he's aware of the, what is going to happen if they click over this link, for example. But for the employee that doesn't know anything about the security, say if you click this one, it's going to be part of the problem because now it's going to cause harm to the entire system. Make sense? Kind of. So, to the next step, we're going to try to define or ask the question to the student. Why you wanted to study information security? Yeah, generally speaking, besides the reason that this is the only class is available, I need to come up with an elective class, or all my friends just sign up for this class. Definitely there is a reason, right, behind why you choose this class. So, generally speaking, in order to protect the computer, whatever network, the information that's stored in this computer, the internet, organizations are increasingly, right now, starting to turn to the information security specialist. There is a need to this, I mean, information security specialist, okay? So first, I'm going to try to answer that question here, why study information security? So the first one here, I mean, the going importing of the IT security and the new career opportunity. So it looks like right now, okay, since all the organizations, the companies right now, they try to make it easy in order to satisfy the customer needs, for example, make it more applicable, easy to access the service. For example, right now with the banks, all the banks have the online banking to make it easy for the customer to find out, to check their email, as I say, account, balance, transfer, and transaction, etc. right? If you want to any place, even the small business, now right now they have a website allow you to order online, to reserve, to say, a schedule, set up an appointment, etc. So make it more convenient. The problem with convenience is gonna cause security issues, right? Now why? Because all this information can be available online, Okay, we, you cannot guarantee all these organizations gonna have like security experts, like, say professional who's gonna help and audit, protect all this information, right? So there's, I mean, this kind of, let's say, uh, usability, it's gonna create a risk to confidentiality, to the integrity and the availability of the data. We're gonna cover, I mean, a few minutes, we're gonna talk about the action, what do you mean, the confidentiality, integrity, availability. To simplify the process, you, for example, when you sign up with specific source or the, the bank account, online banking, you're gonna perform the transaction online, right? So you worry about the confidentiality. What does that mean? You need to secure. That means only authorized user can ask whatever kind of formation that you need to submit, right? Integrity, you need to make sure that when you say, I need to transfer, as I say, $100 from account A to account B, that $100 is gonna be, I mean, this is the message gonna be delivered to the bank. Okay, so no one in the middle will say transfer 200, for example. And said from A to B, transfer the $200 from B to A or to someone else. All right, so you need to make sure that whatever you send with the actual information that's going to be received. Availability, you need to make sure that your bank is available, application available online all the time, right? You can assume that on the blackboard. Assume that the blackboard down during the exam day. There's a problem because you try to log in to access the source. But let's, let's, let's say the user or the authorized user to access the server cannot access the server at the time because the server is down at the time. So we, that's why we have like risk about the confidential integrity availability. Uh, and that's, there is a, that's why there is a need in order to have like the security professional to hire. So they're going reporting. The second thing here. Increasing demand by the government and the private industry is not only by the government, but by the private industry too here. If you take a look at the online, you try to find a job, I believe most of you, if you want to graduate within one or two semesters, definitely try to find out a job, right? So you're going to use Indeed or whatever online, uh, you say, uh, search uh, tool in order to figure out, to find out whether the ad, what, what, what kind of uh, jobs are advertised these days? 
So if you take a look, you see that we do have a software engineer here, yeah, definitely computer networks, administrator, database administrator, and etc. But we do have what's called, I mean, the cybersecurity. We start to have an information system. Now we have, I mean, even for the internship, you gotta dislike. Uh, hot topics and if you want luck to hire someone so that's your chance here so the number of formation security specialists is expected to uh, expect to go 36 percent from 2020 to 2022 you see that we have increased 36 percent for the job uh, vacancy requirement that looking for information security here okay so maybe if we take a look if you're interested to learn more about what kind of are oh, looking for different reasons, more reason why the cybersecurity degree is worth it, or you can have a specialization in the cybersecurity. If you click over this link, you trust me again, you can click over this one to give you like uh, some article. By the way, that's what I'm doing in the class. So in the slide, you see that if there is some interesting article, I encourage you to take a look to read. So I will give you this article uh, uh, within the slides. The question here, how can you, okay, I know that information security is important and uh, uh, there's many places looking for to hire information security specialists. The question here, how can you become information security specialist? How can you know? I mean, I, I'm not gonna say ask you to leave whatever you study right now and focus on information security. It doesn't hurt to take at least one course in the information security in order to be aware of this field, okay? Uh, so in order to be specialist, you can do get a degree, okay, which is gonna be available anywhere. You can get the right certification. Although I'm not a big fan for the certification, you can do this one by your own. That I encourage you to do that without the class. Maybe after this class, you have at least the let's say the base of the information security, then you can do this one by yourself, okay? You can build your home lab and you can work on this one. Yeah? And this is what I encourage you to do this one. Many resources available online, either gonna be classes, either gonna be like uh, just searching the Google and you check the YouTube to find whatever channels available online and you can, I mean, help you in order to increase your, I mean, uh, experience and you get, uh, increase your knowledge. But when you do this one, try to use the virtual machine in order to be safe. You know, the virtualization can be completely disconnected from your host operating system. Whatever you're gonna perform within the virtual virtual machine, you're gonna be staying in the virtual machine, so it's not gonna hurt, I mean, your host machines, okay? And consider an internship, which is what uh, an advice that you usually give to my students that I advise as academic advisor. If you're interested to learn something, if you feel like you are not deciding exactly whether you're gonna be, just an example, whether software engineering would gonna be cybersecurity. Maybe try to seek internship in the software engineering, see whether you like it, that's your field. If not, maybe you're gonna seek an internship in the information security. And there's many places now opening there in the summer. Do an internship and see whether you like this one or not. If you like it, you see that, oh, it's interesting to find this is my career, I'm going to be in the information security. And also, you can take a look at the government jobs. The government jobs that offer many jobs right now. Right now, everyone care about the cybersecurity. Everyone care, I mean, care about the privacy. Ten years ago, when you talk about the people about, for example, to give you a quick example, we used to have in a project, okay, and that one we tried to uh, talk about, let's say, uh, we thought at the time, everyone is worried about his or her privacy in the social networks or the social media, yeah? At that time, 10 years ago, when you have an idea, we said we'd come up with a system that in order to try to hide or protect the privacy of the user using the Facebook and uh, the social media, we were surprised that the people at the time, no one cared. Everyone said, I don't care about my privacy. Yeah, I passed my information online and I didn't care. Right now, if you want to say, oh no, I care because someone is going to use my information, it can sell my information to someone else. Okay? Um, the school store is going to respond to the demands. Okay, it's going to help because, you know, I mean, I believe, let's say for educational, educational reasons, okay? There's not for the profit. Only for the profit. Definitely, they're for looking for the profit. I mean, university looking that for what is the trend. They do some research and they try to attract more students, right? So this is the main reason, actually, not for this. Let's 
but to save the bill for the education reason. Anyway, so the school is going to have some, let's say, uh, special degree. Now we started thinking we have as much we have a master's in cybersecurity with the ITM department. They have bachelor and the master of the cybersecurity, etc. Electronic, uh, I think computer, computer electric engineering. I think they have uh, somehow um, special program for the security in general. So the university is going to come up with the programs. Okay, the Department of Homeland Security to support the Naval Postgraduate School for Homeland uh, Defense and Security. This is another option, for, especially for the citizen student, if you're interested to learn about the security more. Okay, one point here I need to just emphasize that in the ideal world, we would like to achieve the perfect security in the information. What you're looking for, this, for this, the ideal world, I'm looking for the, my system to be secure 100%. Okay, unfortunately, we cannot achieve perfect security. Okay, it's impossible to protect everything against every attacker under all the circumstances. For example, you have your laptop, okay, and you put sensitive information in your laptop. As long as you connect your laptop somehow to the internet, then it's not secure 100%. You cannot protect this one. Unless you unplug your, uh, you put your information in your laptop, unplug your uh, laptop, Take out of, I mean, the battery. Uh, dig, I think, maybe 100 feet in the ground. Bury your laptop. Cover this one. And even when this, even if you do this one, it's still your information is not secure 100 percent. Okay. I mean, just to give you as for the, I mean, given enough time, tools, skills, the hacker can break through any security measures that we have. So we cannot guarantee that we have the uh, uh, ultimate security or perfect security to protect everything about, let's say, every attack, okay? So, remember we talk about the, uh, at the beginning we asked you about why you worry about the security. We said we worry about the security when we have something of value and there is a threat source that possess some kind of risk, right? So we need to find out what do you mean by this one here? So if we tr wanna or really want to understand the risk posed to, let's say, an asset, okay? With the, when you say that an asset, we are going to define this one later, but right now, something in value that you need to protect. It depends on you. It might be vary from person to person, from one organization to another organization. Okay, what kind of value or asset that you need to protect? Okay, so again, if you want to uh, understand the, the risk uh, posed to the asset, that what that we have. This requires us to understand the risk to the information and the system where they stored. For example, if you have some information, you have sensitive information, you store this information, to say, in the cloud. So we need to make sure, I mean, you need to uh, require from you to know that you understand the risk. In this case, you need to require, it's required from you to understand the risk to online information and the system where this information can be stored. How this information uh, is going to be connected? How they can be accessed by? What kind? For example, whether I bought my information to say in a specific server, and that server requires for anyone to access it must be authenticated. Oh, that's what action. Might be the server does require for authentication, so anyone has a link can access that server. Oh, that's a problem. Okay, uh, so. These kinds of questions that we ask, which exactly what we call developing security mindset. So again, I'm going to talk about the security mindset, which is a kind of as a activity when a user or person starting asking a question about, for example, uh, who's the bad actors, what the possibly the bad actor can do, what the possibly can exploit. What vulnerability do I have in my system? For example, what if they are successfully exploiting vulnerability? When we talk about the vulnerability, we're going to explain this one later, but right now it's enough to say vulnerability is like weakness or gaps in the security in your system. For example, my security system or the server doesn't authenticate the user. So anyone can access the server without authentication. You can assume that you have a laptop or computer. Anyone can access this one without providing username and password. This is a vulnerable. Okay? And so let's give you an example to understand what's going on with the security mindset. So assume that you have added, give you an advertisement, okay? For the specific product. 
then ask, after that, I'm going to ask you about your action. So I have two different scenarios. The first one, you're going to say, okay, wow, that's great, great, cool, cool application, whatever. I'm, I can't wait until to use. I don't like this one. I need for you to question. I'm not going to say question everything, but at least I need to say, okay, great, interesting, but I'm wondering. For example, if that application, or let's say the tool or whatever, the new product is going to require from you to, for example, to subscribe. That means you need to provide username and password. Then after that, you have to specify to say payment uh, methods. For example, credit uh, card information, etc. Now start to think, oh great, but I need to have something here. First, how can you guarantee my information can be secure? Whether they use, for example, HTTPS or not, whether they have a secure channel, encrypt the data or not, whether they're gonna take my data, sell it to someone else or not, whether, for example, does this product work as advertised or not, whether it's safe to use or not, and etc. So you see that this kind of mindset, in other words, so if someone asks you what the security mindset, you can say, or you can define this one, the security mindset that when you start asking the questions, for example, what the bad actors, what they can do with the system, whether the system is safe or not, whether the system is secure or not, what if someone, how does someone is going to try to attack the system, how the system is secure, and etc. So it looks like you start thinking about uh, with the security mentalities. You see that? Okay, great product, but this product maybe has some security issues. Okay? There is one interesting link, I mean, if you want to learn about this one, to how can we think as a security professional here. And this have an example in order to go over this one. You know the Nest, okay, thermostat. So let's have a, watch this one on the YouTube, then after that see your reaction, what do you think about this one, okay? I need just to share the link. Okay, most people don't really think about their thermostat. But here's an eye-opening fact. The thermostat on your wall controls half your energy bill. A lot of that energy is wasted, usually when the heat or AC stays on after you've left the house. Programmable thermostats were supposed to help, but there's a hitch. They're incredibly complicated. According to one study, 90% of people don't program them properly, and they all lost the EPA's Energy Star rating in 2009. But what if a thermostat could program itself around your life, not the other way around? The Nest Learning Thermostat does. Nest learns when you change the temperature. So treat it like a normal thermostat. Turn it up when you're cold and down when you're hot. Nest will remember your temperature adjustments and use an array of sensors, sophisticated algorithms, and the processing power of a computer to help it learn. We call it Nest Sense. After a few days, you'll be adjusting Nest less. Within a week, it will put all it's learned into a schedule for your home. Nest will begin noticing when you're gone and will turn on auto away to avoid heating or cooling an empty house. To make the biggest impact on your energy bill, teach Nest good energy saving habits in the first week. Remember to turn the temperature down at night and when you leave the house. You can control Nest from anywhere using your laptop, smartphone, or tablet. Soon, you won't have to remember. Nest will do it for you. And as Nest learns from you, you can learn from Nest. The Nest Leaf will guide you to more energy savings. Changing the temperature just one degree can reduce your energy use by up to 5%. Check your energy history to see how much you saved. You'll see if your temperature changes, the weather, or auto away saved you the most. So, maybe it's time to think about your thermostat. So what do you think? Is a good idea? Great project? I mean, product? Yes, it is. Okay. Anything else you need to add? Remember, we talk about the security mindset. So we started looking for someone exactly. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the security issues here. Yes, great. But the problem here, maybe you're gonna be if you're far away from the house, maybe give some information about your privacy, whether you're gonna be in the house or not. 
right? That's one problem here. Maybe you have to give you like program or they say third. If they get somehow access to this data, they can know, for example, whether you are in your house home right now or not by just monitoring the information uh, collected by this net. I mean, the thermostat, all right? Let me go over this one here. So yeah, the fact that it's the connected to your tablet phone can be also be concerned because the information stored in your device. That's one thing, but the most important thing that we're looking for here, that someone, somehow, since someone, it looks like someone watching when you're gonna leave the house, when you're gonna be present at the house. And even if someone, if I notice that you left the house and managed to get a, Ask to your thermostat, maybe I'm going to increase the temperature or the, decrease the temperature in order to increase your consumption power and etc. Yeah, having the wife system, Wi Fi system and etc. So, I mean, it doesn't, by the way, I didn't have a problem with this thermostat. I got this one as an example. Just we have a product, nice, advertised, but as a second, I need to make sure that, for example, how this information can be protected. Okay, whether you can somehow can misuse this kind of information or not, yeah, whether it's gonna affect my privacy or not, yeah. Yeah, exactly. For example, it's too hot right now, so what I'm gonna do is increase this one, it's gonna be too hot. I mean, be too low, or the opposite, in order to eat while you are not at home, in order to increase your power consumption, yeah. Exactly. So that's what I'm looking with. Does mean, for example, with a good idea or bad idea, but that's what we're thinking. For example, you found a software available online free, which is going to convert a file from, let's say, from, let's say, BDF to Word, for example. Right? So if you found this one, I say, okay, interesting, easy, nice. I'm going to download it, but make sure first, before you download this one, what, there's nothing free, okay? So somehow there's maybe, if you take a look at some software, if you download, you're gonna do something useful, but they have like another software, I mean, malicious, so I mean, downloads is gonna be associated with the software. So pay attention, maybe you're gonna download, you say, tracking system in your, I mean, uh, um, uh, in your uh, browser, which allow tracking, collect information about which website you want to log in and what kind of website to access, etc. So anyway, when you talk about the, uh, where am I? Let me, I need just to jump to the right slide. Now I lost my position where I think we took, yeah, here. So when you talk about security mindset here, there's reason in this case, we need to learn, for example, to think with the security mindset. If you find anybody, this one is gonna help you, for example, if you have any software which will help you to find out investigate, let's say, propagate what kind of, let's say, uh, action or activity, whether what the bad guy can do in order to utilize this system, for example. By knowing the ways that the bad guy try to think about how to attack your system, which help you in order to protect your system, okay? So in this case, for the security mindset, for example, how could this system be attacked? Wireless, Wi-Fi, and such a maybe USB, USB. You can someone can insert USB in order to install malicious software. Then you're gonna take care or control of the my entire system. How could they attack the system? How can you get before this one? Are they likely to attack the system or not? Maybe there are no one interested in to attack the system or this application that you have. What's the weak point, okay, of the attack? Remember, for the attack, I'm gonna try to attack the weak point in the your system, not the more convenient way or point that you preserve. It doesn't mean that you're sitting here said, okay, I hope the attacker is going to attack me from the most convenient way or this point that I'm convenient work with. No, the attacker is going to navigate your system and try to attack the weakest point in order to access the system. And again, you are only uh, as secure as your weakest link that we have. How could the system be defended with another thing? By knowing what kind of attacks, how they attack. So like now, for example, if you say uh, the attacker gonna maybe use the uh, hack the Wi-Fi, maybe need to make use secure Wi-Fi, uh, use like a uh, longer key, uh, update your keys every time, update keep the firmware for your Wi-Fi, for example, route and make sure that you have most updated security can be installed. Uh, whether the information can be uh, stored somewhere, we need to make sure that information must be encrypted 
during the transmitter and also when it didn't get be stored in the server side must be encrypted and etc. So this kind of I mean things that you can do it in order to defend. Okay? How effective whether the countermeasure works or not? You need to evaluate this one. So you need to do somehow penetration testing in order to make sure that whether this information was make sense or not, whether they, whatever you passed it can make sense to you or not. Exact. Yeah, I agree with you. So when we are on the run to make this application easy to use, that's why we need to, the nice point, by the way. So usually we say if we talk about, I don't have my uh, tablet in order to write, so I'm going to use the mouse. So I apologize for not going to be, can be uh, nice. So let's say I have a security here. And here we just say uh, the efficiency or usability. Okay. So the security and usability is going to be in different end of the line. If you try to make your application more usable, user friendly, that's going to be less secure. If you want to make your application more secure, you get a less user friendly, less efficiency. So like you need to find the trade off between the security and the efficiency of the user friendly here. Okay. Of course you can, uh, let's give you an example, for example, assume that you try to log into the system, a new computer. And in order to make access to your computer, the only thing you need to do just to provide me username and login. At least easy, easy to use, but it's not secure. All right. Another side, I measure that when you try to log into the your computer, I require from you to provide the following. You give me username and password, and scan your finger, and you have to scan your uh, uh, retina, and you have to do voice recognition, and you have to insert card. You see that we have a multiple security mechanism in all the place, make it more secure, but at the same time, be, oh, no one's going to use the system. It's going to be less attractive and less user-friendly and less efficient in this case. Exactly. Yeah. The total security is total inconvenience. That I just show you here. If you try to enforce many security mechanisms in your system, it make it, I mean, less, I mean, let's say inconvenient, less user friendly, and people stay away from this one. So that's why you need to find something in between here. Somehow. Yeah, you have some trade-off between the security and the efficiency. Okay? Good point, Scott. So I'm keeping you have if you want to watch about the uh, security mindset with one interesting another YouTube if you have a time you just to click this one instead of watching Netflix for five minutes maybe you can watch this one later anyway so now we take a look at the, the history to of the uh, information security and the reason behind this one I need to just to go over this one and give you like the uh, cover the history of the computer security at the beginning we have a computer security and how can we end up we have the information security get be part of the computer security okay so the history of the information security begins with the computer security in the early days we do have only computer security so things gonna be what we have the server I wouldn't have the server actually we have a big mainframe or one computer and going to be located in a specific place or one location and then this is going to be physically guarded uh, there's a guard outside no one can access the system without authentication authorization okay it's not connected to the internet so the computer security based on what in that time here it's going to define at the early days of the computer okay when you talk about the computer security that's me specified i mean the protection of the physical location and the asset associated with the computer technology from outside the threat as i mentioned we have like a specific room you put this one in the specific room closed locked and no one can access only the authorized user that's what i'm looking for it's not connected to the internet so the only threat that i need to protect my system from someone from the outside try to access the system things change with the time okay then after that, the computer security at the time we do have what's called the mainframe with the huge computer. It gets a chance to take a look at one of the mainframes, what big old machine in my country here. Then after that, now we have a collection of number of mainframes and get be collected together. Okay, uh, the need of uh, at the time we started looking how can we need the computer security. I think it started when the uh, during the World War II when they have the first mainframe computers were developed. And usually at the time actually used in order to aid competition 
of the communication code breaking meshes, message from the uh, German cryptography, I mean device like Enigma, if you are familiar with Enigma, with the German uh, cryptographic tools allowed to encrypt the German communication during the uh, World War II. There at a time, the British and the United States tried to come up and uh, use the mainframe in order to try to say, break down this, I mean, this uh, machine. Okay? So anyway, we have a grouping, devolving, code-breaking competition as I mentioned here, created uh, the first modern computers. At this time, starting thinking about the computer security. We need to physically, I mean, uh, put, uh, come up with the protection of the physical location and the S associated with this computer. At the time, we talk about the formation security, only talk about what here? I mean, the physical security and the second, uh, I mean, simple document classification scheme. For example, and just to make sure that when you talk about information security, because it's not connected to the internet, it's going to be an isolated environment, only thing I need to protect only this, I mean, the physical location, this one. And of course, who can access what? It depends on the classification of the user. You have high classification, you can access document, you don't have the classification access document and dark. Okay? And again, the primary threat, uh, I mean, threats at the early days to the security, the physical left. Someone somehow get break into the physical loca uh, location where we install or set up or store that manifest. Right? That in early stages. Okay, so at least now the computer security is clear at that time. In 1960s, okay, no one born, if you're born at the time, that means I, 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 I'm, uh, I wasn't born too, yeah? so I'm not too old. So anyway, so now we have the many mainframes it's going to be computer connected together online because I'm not going to use only one mainframe in one location. One mainframe, for example, location A with another mainframe in another location wanted to communicate in secure channel. So we somehow we need to connect them, okay, in order to perform more complex, sophisticated jobs or at the time, okay. So in this case, these mainframes require the less composite process of communication than the mainly magnetic tapes between the computer centers. Before we have a connection, assume that we have like mainframe A and mainframe P, okay? And this one is gonna have like, remember, the mainframe is gonna working with the magnetic tape. Yeah, too old, there's no hard disk. They have magnetic tape, they have must install. I remember I was in the undergrad, uh, in the college, and we get a chance to take a look at one of the mainframe that relates I think the oil company. So we're amazed. I think they got at the operator at the time, we got phone call from another site and said, okay, please install. I need to ask specific, let's say, magnetic tape. So that operator take the magnetic tape and so insert in the machine in order to that guy on the other side can access this one. Before doing it, looks like you have somehow some connection, right? Because that guy from remotely can access this information by dialing up the phone, then after that, X to that surface. Before that, what they're doing if uh, we have one mainframe from A to B try to access to say specific magnetic tape, they're gonna mail it to him because they don't have any way to communicate. Then after that, we have a communication. Now it looks like we have a specific network. If we have a network, so it's gonna be more convenient, but it's gonna be risky right now. Why? Because somehow can, someone can access this network, right? Now we need to protect, I, I don't need, the problem here, the computer security can be expanded. Instead, just I need to have, I mean, protecting, I mean, the physical location for the frame A and the physical location for the, I mean, the parameter, physical parameter for the uh, main frame B. I, in addition to this one, I need to make sure that only authorized user can access this kind of connection here. So we have expanded. So the computer security must be evol evolved in this case. So in response to this need, they came up with the ARP, ARPNET, which is, I mean, the, uh, let's say, evolved to be an internet. So this one could be like connection, somehow connect different mainframes together. This one has, let's say, a uh, start growing the popularity, okay, which increasing, I mean, the potential of misuse. Again, as we mentioned a few minutes ago, as you mentioned, guys, less convenient, I mean, more convenient, and gotta be, uh, uh, add some risk to the, uh, add security risk scale of concerns. The problem with the ARPNET here, ARPANET, I mean ARPANET, uh, ARPANET I guess, is the pronunciation is correct or not? Anyway, 
it's gonna be have like individual remote sites to not did not have sufficient control to protect data from unauthorized remote users. Remember, we have an A and B here, okay? And this one, it has only, let's say, physical, it can protect the physical parameters here, but you have maybe a remote user gonna access the system here. I don't have any safeguard in order to protect the system from the remote users, okay? Uh, they have vulnerability password structure and format. Uh, they have lack of safety procedure for dial-up connections. I believe at that time they have like a uh, phone number. You have to dial up a specific phone number in order to access to this main, the mainframe uh, from this uh, location or this mainframe or the other mainframe. Yeah. They don't have a user identification authorization. Remember. It's easy to find someone personally is physically standing here and to check who can access to the system. It's easy, you have a guard. But for the remote user, you didn't have this option or this, I mean, security mechanism at that time. Okay? So from 1970s, 80s now, the movement toward the security that went beyond the protection of the physical location. Now think if you say, okay, it's not protecting the physical location. Now we have online or remote users try to add this information to the server. We cannot take a look to check every single one. I mean, there's no way because it's gonna be, it's not physical user to access, it's gonna throw the connection. So we need to find a mechanism, a way in order to make sure how can we uh, come up with the different technique mechanism in order to protect against this kind of risk. So we need to expand, I mean, the security definition for, for, to the computer security. Uh, the Department of Defense came up, uh, I think they uh, set up, I mean, it's not set up, I mean, they came up with the team, okay, which is gonna do, uh, came up with, uh, I mean, have a response team in order to come up with some recommendation. How can we handle this case? What we need to do? What will your recommendation? How can you perform this one? They came up with the report they call R609 with the RAND report. This report has been was classified for 10 years. Only the only one access this kind of report, I mean the Department of Defense, okay? When they have only access this recommendation, with this recommendation, start looking at the way that uh, how to study could be the security and identify, for example, the whole the management, the policy issue in it. In other words, we have had a different risk. We have a more remote user to try to access the system and the physical, protecting the physical location is not enough. We need to have more to do more. So the scope of the computer security now expanded beyond, or go beyond, I mean, talking about the protecting the physical location. Now we need to add something else. We need securing data. Okay, and also limiting the random and authorized access to the data. We need to figure out who can access what because you have a remote user that's going to access login to try to remotely access the data here. And here we came up involving personnel from the multiple level for organization information security in order to start building what's called, I mean, the policy with the policy, what you try to achieve in your system. What are your security goals in your system? For example, you, you must have, for example, it's not at the time, but just to give you an idea what you mean about the secure policy, security policy. For example, we need to have the user uh, must use, uh, say, sec uh, complex password, not easy password or easy guest password. How can you achieve this one? Of course, you have some mechanism to perform that. For example, the user must be authenticated. How can you do this one? That's a different story, but the policy is going to specify what security rules are the goals that you need to achieve in the system here. Okay, then after that here, yeah, we have in the, uh, what you call, Maltex. This, if you, yeah, if you know that is an operating, old operating system, that means you are old like me. If not, that's fine. So early research came up with what? Now we have like, we need to come up with the operating system, which is gonna have like security, let's say, integrated in its core function. As an operating system, which you can already have the security if we require to have the username and password is part of the operating system. This is the first operating system came up with. They call multiplexed information and computing service. Okay, which uh, mainframe time sharing operating system developed in 1960 by the number of uh, by the General Electric and MIT and Bell. Okay, and several 
players that used, I mean, work in this project, they came out create a new operating system called Unix. So the people that start Unix were working in the project called Multix, with the other operating system. The multi Multix operating system is obsolete, it's not available anymore, it's not used, but it's interesting, it's worth to mention this one because this is the first operating system. Now, if we're thinking about it, remember, we talk about the computer security, used only to protect, I mean, the physical location. Now we end up, we have, oh, we have a bunch of mainframes so to communicate with each other. Now we need to think of beyond the physical location. Then after that, now we have an operating system, which in the operating system, in its core, integrate, it's, it's have like security integrated with its core. It's going to use a name, a password, etc. So different stories, something in you. We don't know that before. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I was excited, so I moved my hand everywhere. So I, I mean, through stuff of my office. So my disk. So I'm fine, if you worry. Um, uh, the difference between the, uh, I mean, the Unix and the Multix here, the Unix at the time was only like text processing. There's no username and password at the time. It's not until I think the 17s they start to have like a simple component of the security going to require username and password. But at the time, this is like a simple version. There is no security, I mean, username and password. Uh, Multics is going to have what? They have multiple security levels, passwords, but Unix at that time. You, you follow me, you follow the structure? The how's happening? Computers security is starting expanding a little bit here. Uh, in the later 1970s, we start to have like the personal computers, which is going to have, since we have a personal computer, now the number of computers increased, the device can be connected, at the same time, since it's more convenient, you can sit from your home, not from your home, not to have a, yeah, we have a personal computer, but not every single home that has this device, but I'll increase the number of users that can access the system, right? So that means it's going to be more convenient, but at the same time, and increase the security concerns here. Okay, so now in the 1990s, we start to have like the networks that can be the connected uh, area became, became, I would say, more common. We have a set of computers that connect. It's not only mainframes, but we have a personal computer that is starting connected to each other. We start to have what's called the internet, which can be the global network of the networks. Okay, so now we have multiple PCs. It's not only many frames. Now we have many PCs connected to each other in order to access the system here. I think, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm fine. Okay. So at the beginning, when you start to connect this one, we didn't have a standard right now. IP, TCP protocol, etc. We have a standard. Everyone you must follow. No, at the time, still, the early stage, you see the evolving with the time. So, at the time, we have a do little, uh, uh, there's no, they did little in order to ensure the security of the information, okay? I remember when I started working in the internet in my country the first time, okay? I was lucky because I work in the place that has, I mean, the first internet connection in my country. Then after that start, we have only, we have the oil companies that have internet connection access, okay? So at that time, I believe, there is no firewall, by the way. There is no antivirus. There is no internet security. No one cares about this one. All of them try to navigate the internet, log in to Netscape or whatever browser at the time. Just try to figure out what's going, what's going on, okay? How can you connect? How can you access? I don't care about the information. They use, I mean, the Yahoo email or Hotmail. I think Yahoo. Yeah, Hotmail. Because we, uh, and different other emails, it depends on the, we do have the Middle East, we have another email provider, so we have a different way to access that. Everyone don't care. I remember that. If you take the link that you're using, for example, when you log in a specific email, copy the link, the URL, and the change the few, I mean, numbers, you're going to add a login to another account. It's only in the early stages, okay? No one knows about the security. So if you send something, we use to have sub seven, which our tool allow you in order to inject the same malicious code. The anyone, if you click over the email, open the picture, so you're gonna have full access to that account. You can access that computer remotely, and you have like specific options. You can specify a player with the mouse. I mean, do less harm. Copy all the data that's stored there, and etc. You see, at the top, no one knows what's going on. But now things can be changed here. So in early here, as I mentioned, early internet deployment, security was treated as low priority. 
And the main reason at that time, because they thought that, who communicate using the early internet? Most of them could be scientists, okay? Uh, and these email uh, users could be uh, trustworthy, right? Computer scientists, mail server authentication and email encryption did not seem necessary at that time. We trust you who they kind of communicate, but they don't know that you have bad guys that are waiting for the chance in order to try to play around. So things change with the time. So at the early computing approaches they rely on the security that built on the physical environment of the data system or data center, which is not working anymore. That means we need to think about different way to talk about the security here. So since we have network computers, it got to be computers everywhere, connected from the house, different locations. We cannot enforce the same security mechanism in everywhere. You cannot send the guard in every single computer in this house in order to double check who is trying to access the system. It doesn't make sense, okay? So that means in this case, the, uh, I think in 1993, it's here, DEFCON, conference established for those interested in the information security. Now we're thinking about the information security. Now we're thinking like information security began to emerge as an independent discipline. But we're still in the computer security. We're starting with the top of the physical, just we need to protect in the physical uh, protection. Then now we're adding up, we need to care about the information. Because now I can, at the beginning, so it looks like you have like you, you put something in your desk, yeah, and you lock your door. As long as your door is locked, no, your, that means your information is safe. Right now, it's not like this. Now, it looks like you put something in your computer, your computer connecting the internet, in regards you locked your door or not, anyone can access your data from the outside, right? So your concerns will change. I mean, the security requirement to change the definition. It's not enough, you have to add more. Now you have to care about the security of the information. It might be leaked, might be compromised. So now we start locking out the information security. Okay, I think at the time, uh, in the DEF CON at the beginning, start with the uh, in Las Vegas. I'm old, but I guess, okay, at the first conference. We start, I mean, gathering, I mean, the people that's interested in the information security, which could be a lawyer, government employees, law enforcement, and etc. The interesting thing with the DEF CON right now, when you talk about this one, it looks like you have exchange of information between what? Two adversarial groups. The white hat of the law enforcement, they say, and the security professional from one side, and you see the black hat would the, be the hacker, the computer criminals. It's, uh, it's interesting. Sometimes I found some YouTube videos, and get to try and watch them the different to see how to hack out the mimic or they make fun of the. I'm not going for the white hat, but you say it's easy to attack the system. I did this one and show you, uh, I mean, a few slides to explain. How to have it. Anyway, so now starting in, um, the, uh, in the late of 19th, starting as I mentioned here, the information security beginning to be emerging and in, uh, independent discipline. And now starting we have the antivirus products, internet security became, let's say, popular. Yeah, you see the starting involvement because at the beginning we don't care because we feel everything secure, but you know, things can be changed with the time. Okay, thanks guys, and see you next time. Bye.